Good morning everyone. I am Wawi Torremocha Mlamdag from BSZ English to A and the first reporter of our group. So today I will be discussing to you a topic under cognitive perspective which is adjustal psychology. So today I will be talking about what is gestalt psychology, the gestalt principles and the proponents of gestalt psychology. So now, let us know first, what is the core belief of gestalt psychology? So, the core belief of gestalt psychology is holism. So when we say holism, the theory that parts of a whole are intimate interconnection or it cannot be understood without reference to the whole. So as gestalt psychology believes that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So now, let us define what is gestalt psychology. So it is a school of thought that looks human mind and behavior as a whole. So it talks about the perceptions, the point of views, views that typically defines a gestalt psychology. So when trying to make sense of the world around us, gestalt psychology suggests that we do not simply focus on every small component. Instead, our minds tend to perceive objects as part of greater whole and as elements of more complex system. So that is the suggestion of gestalt psychology. And it was founded in the 20th century that provided the foundation for the modern society of perception. And also, it emphasizes that the whole of anything is greater than its parts. So that is the attribute of the whole are not deducible from analysis of the parts in isolation. So when we say deducible or deductive, it is involving references from general principles. So that is what we call deducible. So the word gestalt is used in modern German to mean the way a thing has been placed or put together. So there is no exact equivalent in English, form or shape are the usual translations, but in psychology, the word is often interpreted pattern or configuration. So when we say configuration, guys, it is an element that are arranged accordingly or completely arranged. So that is what we call configuration. So gestalt is a configuration. So now let's talk about who are the, propo the proponents of gestalt psychologists. So, Max Wedermeyer, he was the father of gestalt psychology and was born on April 15, 1880 in, in Austria, Hungary and was died on October 12, 1943 at the age of 63 in New York, United States. So now, let us know first on where was the gestalt psychology begun. So according to Max Wedermeyer, he observed an optical illusion or a phi phenomenon where two stationary objects seem to move if they are shown appearing and disappearing in rapid succession. In other words, we perceive movement where there is none. Wedermeyer concluded that we perceive things by seeing the whole perceptions, not by understanding individual parts. <clears throat> so for example, the blinking of lights at a train station. So the whole perceive is that one light appears to move quickly between two points. So the reality is that two separate lines are blinking rapidly without moving at all. So, Wedermeyer's observations of the phi phenomenon are widely credited as the beginning of gestalt psychology. And he went to publicize the core principles of the field. So, but before we go on to the um, gestalt principles, we will know first who are those um, another co-founders of gestalt psychology. So, we have here Wolfgang Kuller. The founders of gestalt psychology was born on January 21, 1887 in governorate of Estonia, Russia and was died on June 11, 1967 at the age of 80 in Hampshire, US. Now, the, another one is Kurt Kofka, 
was born on March 17, 1886 in Berlin, German Empire and was died on November 22, 1941 at the age of 55 in Northampton, Massachusetts. So now let's move to the Gestalt Principles. So according to Gestalt psychologists, the way we form our perceptions are guided by certain principles or laws. These principles or laws determines what we see or make things situation. So the, the first law of principle is the good prognance. So these foundational principle states that you will naturally perceive things in their simplest form or organization. So as you can see in the picture, we have here a series of circles. So instead of using another form or another figure as our example, so we tend to use circles for it to be easily recognized. So reality is organized or reduced to the simplest form possible. So that is the law of principle, the, pro the good pregnancy. Next is the law of principle similarity. The principle suggests that we naturally group similar items together based on elements like color, size, or orientation. So as you can as see in the picture, we have here that there are all shadows, there are color black, and their, and their background is white. So we can see here the similarity. But an object can be emphasized if it is dissimilar to the others. This is called anomaly. So as you can see in the last part, and there is one shadow that deviates to another. So it means um, he do possess a different form than, than other. So another example of similarity states that elements within an assortment of objects will be perceptually grouped together if they are sim similar to each other. So as you can see, here we can see the color block, the color, the shapes, and also the figure. That is law of similarity. Next is the law of principle proximity. States that when an individual perceives an assortment of objects, they perceive objects that are close to each other as as forming a group. So as you can see in the picture, the, we have here small circles that are being grouped accordingly. So here we can see that there are pairs and objects that are close to each other as forming a group. Next is the law of principle continuation. So individuals have tendency to continue the, the contours whenever the elements of the patterns establish an implied direction. So according to this principle, we will perceive elements arranged in, in, on a line curve as related to each other. Well, elements that are not on the line or cor curve are seen as separate. So as you can see here, guys, we can see their um, H form. And we, we also see here a curve, a line curve, are seen separately. So that is law of continuation. Next is the law of principle or the closure states that individuals perceive objects such as shapes, letters, pictures as being whole when they not complete. So as you can see in the picture guys, we can say that the picture shows a bear, an animal bear. Though we cannot say that its form are complete, but we can easily identify through the shapes, the pictures, or just through our imagination. So that is what we call a principle or the law of closure. Next is the law of principle figure ground. So we tend to pay attention and perceive things in the foreground first a stimulus will be perceived as separate from its ground. So as you can see in the picture, um, the floor here is a crown-like structure and the ground here is the background itself. That is what we call um, figure and ground. So that is the law of principle, figure and ground. So now, how to apply gestalt theory, teaching and learning? 
So Gestalt is a theory of learning that focuses on the mind's perspective. It is useful as a behavioral tool as it enables the teacher to channel the pupil's energy into thinking of an item or subjects as parts of a whole. For example, a car, being metal, paint, wheels, or etc. By thinking of components and breaking down of situation, it enables for more, for more psychological process to take place and over time will broaden a pupil's mind into thinking of the sum of the whole rather than just a complete thing or situation. So, therefore, just told psychology, it is uh, provided the foundation for the modern study of perception, um, your perspectives, your point of views, or your views about something. And Gestalt psychologist believes that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So that's the end of my report guys. I hope you learned something about the Gestalt psychology, where it began, and who are those um, Gestalt psychologists. So that would be all, and thank you for listening. Bye!